in this video we will discuss about important viva questions and answers that is uh, related to determine the equivalent conductance of weak electrolyte at infinite elution using Kolderas law we will discuss about important viva questions and answers first question why molar or equivalent conductance of weak electrolyte cannot be determined by extrapolation method okay yake find magala madakagala in the case of weak electrolyte the molar or equivalent conductance increases with increase in the dilution because dilution causes ionization of weak electrolyte but it does not reach the limiting value or infinite value andre en artha now molar athwa equivalent conductance na kanidikagala in the case of weak electrolyte by extrapolation method yake andre because in the case of weak electrolyte the molar or equivalent conductance increases with dilution but it will not reach a limiting value adu enantha torustin graph alli okay let us consider this graph okay uh, uh, this is uh, root c in x axis in y axis you are taking molar conductance molar conductance okay uh, here this is the uh, nature of graph for a strong electrolyte okay here uh, root c means here the concentration here increases okay concentration increases uh, means initially uh, it has low concentration means it has high dilution okay uh, dilution that's uh, more than again molar or equivalent conductance increases but in the case of a strong electrolyte uh, it will reach a limiting value or infinite value that is called molar conductance at infinite evolution okay now in the graph of the guy it will touch the uh, y-axis in the case of a strong electrolyte means it will reach uh, this limiting value this limiting value is called molar conductance at infinite evolution but in the case of weak electrolyte on dilution the molar or equal contents increases with dilution but it will not reach limiting value not the y-axis to touch agila the y-axis cross model uh, it will uh, you know the, it move parallel to y-axis this value is parallel to y-axis hence by using uh, extrapolation method we cannot find out uh, molar contents of weak electrolyte at uh, infinite evolution in the case of uh, weak electrolyte by using extrapolation method Okay, by using uh, uh, extrapolation method, we can find out for strong electrolyte. The, uh, simple, you know, in the case of uh, weak electrolyte, a limiting value reach agala, uh, the can be agala. In the case of strong electrolyte, limiting value reach agate. Next, what is cold rush law? Explain. Cold rush law, you know, at infinite dilution. What is meaning of infinite dilution? Almost zero concentration. The dissociation of the electrolyte is complete and hence each ion makes a definite contribution to the molar conductivity of the electrolyte irrespective of nature of the other ions associated with it means in simple way uh, uh, what is cold rush law the cold rush law is defined as okay the molar contents of uh, electrolyte at infinite dilution is the sum of molar contents of its cation and uh, and an at infinite evolution is called cold rush law cold rush law andre no nodli illen aithilli minute cold rush law andre aithilli see at hmm. what is meaning of cold rush law Cold rush law means what? The molar contents of electrolyte at infinite dilution is the sum of molar contents of its cation and anion at infinite dilution. It is called cold rush law. Means the molar contents of acetic acid is equal to molar contents of its anion that is CaCCO minus plus molar contents of H plus ion at infinite dilution. It is called cold rush law. Okay. Next, write the applications of cold rush law. 
the first application by using Coder's law we can find out the molar contents of weak electrolyte at infinite elution uh, see uh, the molar contents of weak electrolyte at infinite elution cannot be determined experimentally but this can be calculated by using Coder's law the molar contents of acetic acid at infinite elution can be calculated can be calculated see we can find out the molar contents of acetic acid at infinite elution uh, by calculating the uh, contents of kcl scl and potassium acetate at infinite elution and then you know if you know the value of uh, molar contents of uh, kcl scl and potassium acetate at infinite elution then we can calculate molar contents of acetic acid the acetic acid is very connected to at infinite elution yavaga idr value ella gotidre yav electrolyte do kcl scl matte potassium acetate idr value ella gotidre then we can find out the molar contents of acetic acid at infinite elution it is the application of colder's law next uh, this see the molar contents of acetic acid at infinite elution is equal to molar contents of its uh, anion at infinite elution plus molar contents of cation at infinite elution okay adhe thara kcl scl potassium acetate okay now again birthday kcl under its cation plus anion at infinite elution similarly for scl similarly for potassium acetate okay uh, if you know the value of this kcl scl uh, potassium acetate then you can find out molar contents of acetic acid at infinite elution next calculation of degree of dissociation of weak electrolyte by using coldest law we can find out uh, degree of dissociation of weak electrolyte what is the meaning of degree of dissociation it is a ratio of molar contents of electrolyte at specific concentration divided by molar contents of electrolyte at infinite division where alpha means degree of dissociation the here this means molar contents at uh, specific concentration this one means molar contents at infinite elution okay if you know the value of this two then we can find out degree of dissociation by using coldrush law this is second application next application uh, by using coldrush law we can find out solubility of sparingly soluble salt what is meaning of sparingly soluble salt their solubility is less in the water system is called sparingly soluble salt okay example hcl barium sulfate lead sulfate etc these are the examples for sparingly soluble salt okay next solubility can be determined by using this equation that is solubility is equal to specific contents into tausen divided by molar contents at infinite dilution where k means specific contents this one means molar contents at infinite dilution if you know the value of this two then we can find out solubility of the sparingly soluble salt with the help of coldrush law these are the applications of uh, cold rush law next what are the components of a conductivity cell it contains platinized platinum sheets platinized platinum sheets next question can ordinary water use it to prepare solutions in connectance measurements if not why the ordinary water na use maadabodha during experiment of the uh, connectivity titration no ordinary water cannot be used because ordinary water contains uh, connecting ions the value is not exact in a the ordinary water li ions are in the ions move out the contents vary out the namge accurate value barala therefore we are not using ordinary water we are using distilled water next how can you test whether the given electrolyte is a strong electrolyte or weak electrolyte yav the test maadu andre in the case of strong electrolyte more will be the conductance in the case of weak electrolyte less will be the conductance like this we can differentiate uh, strong and weak electrolyte yav thara maartivi andre if the solution has high conductance then it is called strong electrolyte if conductance is low then the solution is called weak electrolyte for more information visit uh, this uh, site this link okay uh, it is available in the description box this is first link next second link this third one this fourth this next link this is next one next. 
you can find in uh, description box thank you